Today on the broadcast, I want us to take a look into the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. And there's an interesting story in here, because as, as you know, we've been talking a lot about about making sure that we're separate from the world and making sure that we're doing what it is that God has called us to do. And today I want us to share I want to share a story. And we're going to be skipping around a little bit because there's a lot of stuff to read. So I encourage you when you get some time today or this weekend, it's a long weekend for many of us, um, you know, for Labor Day. Uh, so I encourage you, read Joshua chapter 6, 7, and 8. And check out, as it's an awesome section of scripture. I think all scripture is awesome. Um, but this scripture here gives us a, a story that I think we need to spend some time looking at here. And I want to talk today on the topic of sin in the camp. You know, we've been talking a lot the past week uh, about it, us choosing to bring sin into our families, into our homes, into our churches. And that's kind of exactly what happened here. Now, here in the early part of the book of Joshua, they're just starting out going into the promised land to take possession of what God had promised uh, promised them and they were coming up to the first city that they were going to have an encounter with and it was the city of Jericho and it was a walled city as many of them were back in their time frame and an angel of the Lord had met with Joshua prior to them arriving there in, in Jericho and told him what they needed to do and after we get to the seventh day and they were marching around the city uh, let's see, chapter 6, verses 18 and 19 says this. Let's start at verse 17. Let's see if start at verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you... In any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord, and they shall come into the sanctuary of the Lord. So Joshua is telling his people here. He's telling the Israelites that they need to make sure when they conquer Jericho that they don't take of the city of Jericho. The accursed thing that he's referring to here is the city of Jericho. That was the accursed thing. And he said, don't take nothing from that. In other words, when this is destroyed, when the city is destroyed, don't take of the spoils of this war. Don't take any of the things from there. Otherwise, you will be accursed and you will make Israel accursed because of your sin. How could the sin of one person trouble the whole nation? Well, look over here at, at chapter 7 and verse number 1. The city had been destroyed, and now we read, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. The accursed thing again, the city of Jericho. He said, For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabadee, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So how is it that the sin of, of Achan can get the Lord mad at the whole nation of Israel? Well, it's the same thing when we look back to the story of Adam and Eve. You know, it was because of their disobedience that we are bothered with sin today. How is that? Because we were designed to have that relationship with God. And because of that sin, when Adam and Eve took of that forbidden fruit, they broke that covenant. Therefore, we, have, we live now in a broken world. And likewise, Israel was in a covenant with God at that point. Because remember, in, in the Old Testament book of Genesis, Abraham was told by God that he would receive this land, that this would be the promised land for the nation of Israel. And they were under that, that covenant with God. 
in that they were God was going to fight for them and they were going to take possession of that land, following God, following his instructions. But now, Achan comes in here and messes that thing up by sinning. What did he do? Let's jump over here to verses 19 through 21 of Joshua chapter 7. And scripture tells us, And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. You see, it came down that they figured out it was Achan that had committed a sin against the Lord. And now Joshua is challenging him, saying, Tell me, give glory to the Lord, tell me what it is that you did. Confess it. Verse 20 says, And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them, and beheld they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent the silver under it. See, Achan came clean. He told Joshua what he did. And as a result of that, after Joshua sent people back to his tent to bring back what he had stolen, Achan was stoned. He was killed, him and his family. Now you're saying to yourself, what does the story have to do with us today in the year 2023? This is what it has to do with. See, there's certain places sin doesn't need to be. Sin doesn't need to be in the life of a Christian at all. And for the Christian, we are told in, in the book of, of 1 John, chapter number 2, John tells us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For the nation of Israel, they were on their way into the promised land. They had defeated the city of of Jericho the first city they had to wipe out in taking possession of the promised land and then after they had left Jericho there was a small little city not too far away that they should have easily overtaken but they didn't overtake it that's this is why I want you to read chapter 7 because we're not chapter 6 to chapter 7 because I'm not going into detail and reading all these scriptures today but they went up against this little city, and this little city slew a bunch of Israelites. All because of that sin. They should have been able to easily overtake this small town called Ai. But they couldn't because of this man's sin. Because this man did what he shouldn't have done. He fell in love with the things of this world and partook them. And to make things even worse, remember in chapter 6, Joshua said that the silver and gold was consecrated to the Lord. So he not only sinned against Israel, but he stole from the Lord. And as a result of his sin and of his stealing from the Lord, the nation was a curse. The nation had their back turned, or God had turned his back on the nation. They didn't successfully win the next battle. And they lost several people. And it probably was even more of a, a blow to their faith. It's probably even more of a blow to their morale that they couldn't beat this tiny little town. All because of this one man's sin. The reason I'm telling this story is too often we're bringing sin into the camp. By the camp, I'm referring to the church. We're bringing sin into the church. If the Bible in the Old Testament called something a sin, guess what? It's still a sin today. And we're bringing sin into the church, and we're blatantly waving it before the Lord, and we're expecting the Lord to do nothing but bless our church. And friends, if it didn't work that way back here for Joshua, it's not going to work that way for us today. That's why we need to make sure that we don't bring things into the church, into our families, into our lives that doesn't belong there, whether or not it has a Christian label on it. 
that's what the problem lies in. I've said it several times in these studies the past couple of days. We've created such a subculture in our, in our world today that there's a Christian counterpart for everything the world has to offer. And we were told not to love the world, but yet we figure if we change it a little bit, put a Christian label on it, we'll be able to partake in that because it's not no longer of the world. It has a Christian label on it. And that's not the way it works. I can't can't tell you that enough. That's not the way it works. Do you think John said, out of vain, not to love the world, neither the things that are in the world? No. For John, it meant whether it had a Christian label on it or not. And that's the way we need to look at it today. And as a result, don't think for a second that God's going to overlook our sin today. He didn't overlook it back here in Joshua's time, and he's not going to overlook it today. Achan and his family got stoned because of the sin that he did in stealing from God and, and taking of the spoils that he shouldn't have took. And here we are today waving things like magic, waving things like false teachers, waving things like false doctrines, bringing the gay agenda into the church. I've seen that. I've seen videos of pastors, and if you're listening to the podcast, you didn't see it, but I just did air quotes again today. Pastors who are... Who are praying as if God is gay and he's not. And we're waving that in front of him. No wonder we're called a stench in his nostrils. So friends, let me ask you this. Is there sin in your camp today? Is there something in your life that is separating you and God? Is there something in your life that is damaging the relationship of others with God. Pray, get that forgiveness, get that sin out in the open, get that hidden thing out there. Because one day it's going to be out there for everybody to see. Get forgiveness and get things made right with God today before it's too late. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. Then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day.